Welcome to the first of a multi-part series of videos that I'm producing for the Crusade system, a narrative way of playing by Games Workshop. <laughs> So welcome to part 1. Moving away from the traditional method of using points to build a structured army, Crusade instead uses the power level system. This was introduced in 8th edition and was, wasn't really well thought about as the community would describe it because the power level of some units was a bit more than the other ones and it didn't quite match up. So. With the introduction of 9th edition, these were more smoothed out, power levels were thought about again, and born of this is the Crusade system. This can be found in the main core rulebook and also supplements which have been recently released. Care should be taken though to check relevant updates and erratas. A link will be found below. So how do you start? Well, to decide, you'll need to decide which faction you will take for your Crusade Force, these are broken down into seven factions across the Warhammer 40,000 universe, and these seven are Imperium, Chaos, Aldari, Tyranids, Orcs, Necrons, and Tau Empire. How do you know where your army fits in with this structure? Well, on every single data sheet for every single unit, there is a faction keyword. This is being shown now for a couple of examples. So you know where your army fits in. So you're now ready to start building your crusade force. And this section will help you, I believe, as some of our gaming group have found that the terminology is a bit different from what it previously was. You start with a 50 power level limit. This limit is used to build your force and can include anything as long as it's matching in the keyword as stated before. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using the Space Marines, the Adeptus Astartes, as an example for building a force. Care is to be taken at this point as to remember that the force you're building will still need to fill the Battle Forged criteria in order to play games within the desired format, as set down in the rulebook. A Battle Forged army is described on page 244 of the rulebook as an army organised so all its units are in detachments. This means that all the units within the game, along with their power level, you will see have a battlefield role. This battlefield role denotes where you can fit them in to detachments. For example, a Space Marine Captain is a HQ. A squad of intercessors are troops. Blade Guard veterans are elites. Interceptors, fast attack. Storm Raven gunship is a flyer, a repulsor, executioner is a heavy support, an impulsor is a dedicated transport and an imperial knight is a lot of war choice. The benefits of using detachments are found on page 248 as I quietly turn my page. These detachments gain you the access to command points so we are now ready to start building our Space Marine Force for this example. I'm going to use my own Space Marine chapter, the Void Guardians, for this. Pictures of these can be found on Instagram using the hashtag WSWVoidGuardians. This will take you to my Space Marine chapter, which I'm making slowly and with a lot of procrastination. The force I've chosen for this is a balance force, I believe using a lot of the new latest primary space marine units coming in at a very nice bang on the target 50 power level let's begin with the army first off in the battlefield role is hq i've gone for a primaris captain primaris librarian to give us some psychic offense and a primaris chaplain because the new rules are very very nice on to the troops i've gone for a solid troop choice in this list two squads of intercessors and one squad of the new Salt Intercessors to try and add a bit of punch. Backing these up will be Elite Section, Fast Attack and Heavy Support. For this I've got Aggressors, Deceptors, which are the Jump Pack equipped, Primary Space Marines, and then the new boys on the block, the Eradicators. 
A note of caution now, as you're building your list for your order of battle. Care is to be taken as you make the original list. On each data sheet, you will see the power level displayed. And this is for the number of models as described in the first part of the text. So the minimum squad, as can be seen in this example from the Space Marine Intercessor set. The minimum squad size is five power level consisting of one sergeant and four marines and a full maximum size squad which would be one sergeant and nine marines is a different bigger power level so with all that down and understood it's now time to start building a force with the order of battle and understanding what it actually is so the order of battle i believe can be split down into two functions the first one is it shows you which active units you have in your current crusade force and the second function of this is it helps you to keep track of the admin side of the crusade that you're currently running by showing you how many battles you fought the battle tally section how many battles you won your current requisition point level more on this later supply limit the supply limit is the current power level which is available to you supply used this is the current power level which you are currently using this may differ from the supply limit. The power rating of each unit, this can change due to upgrades. The total amount of crusade points for each unit, more on this later as well. Blank copies of the order of battle can be found in the main rule book and also various places online using popular search engines. This is a copy of the order of battle. So let's break it down. In this part, you've got the active units in your crusade force battle tally, battles you've won, requisition point level, supply limit, supply used, power rating of each unit, crusade points for each unit. So using the Space Marine Force before, we are now ready to input the data into our very own order of battle for the Space Marines. Next up in the admin is a crusade card. Each of your units in your order of battle will need a crusade card. This card is individually set for each unit. So let's delve into this. I believe it's a work of art and a brilliant system, which I've been using at the time of recording now. We are on our fourth game of Crusade. So, part one of the Crusade card. Unit name, battlefield role, Crusade faction, selectable keywords. These are important because it denotes the force which you're using. Battlefield role obviously helps you fill detachments. Crusade faction is what you've chosen from. For example, with us, it's Imperium. Part 2. Unit type, equipment, psychic powers, warlord traits and relics. Unit type is standard. Equipment is every gun, grenade, stabby stick they're armed with. Psychic powers. If your character or units have a psychic keyword, they have the ability to manifest psychic powers. These psychic powers are chosen before you start your first game and are kept. You can't change them unless you spend requisition points. More on this in the next video. Warlord traits, if your person is a character, normally you get warlord trait for free. Not in Crusade. Requisition points again need to be spent. More on this in a minute. Relics, normally match play you get a free relic not in crusade need to spend those requisition points more on this in the next video section three power rating the power rating of the units can change so this should be kept up to date experience points as you go through the games you will build up experience points based on completing agendas killing things being marked for greatness more on this later on Crusade points. The crusade points is what they've brought in to try and balance the games of which you could have played against someone who is just starting out. More on this, surprisingly, later. Section 4, Combat Tallies. This goes into the battles you've played, the heroic deeds you've done, how many units you've killed, how many agendas you've completed. Section 5, Rank. The rank is which level of experience you have. This will then gain you battle honours. 
And finally on the lower part of this is Battle Scars. This is what you get when you die. If your unit is completely destroyed during the game, you roll on the table and there's a chance of getting a Battle Scar. More on this also in video number 3 coming up soon. And now for your viewing pleasure we have a quick example of the completed top section of a unit card. This is for our Primaris Librarian of the Force. As you can see now, Battlefield Roll HQ, Crusade Faction Imperium, selectable keywords, Ultramarines. This is because we're playing the boys in blue. His equipment, bolt pistol, force sword, frag and crab grenades, the psychic powers which I've selected for him, and also filled in now, is a power level for him, which is five. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for joining me for this detailed look into the Crusade system part one. Hope to see you again in another video. And as usual, if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll get back to you. And then smash the like and give us a sub if you watch this video. There's plenty more to view. Take care. Goodbye.